My name is Chris Gardner. I am a research scientist at the Bird Polar and Climate Research Center and the School of Earth Sciences at The Ohio State University. And I'm a geochemist working in Antarctica. I always liked science, but I mostly liked camping. <laughs> we always joke that it's really cold science camp for adults. We're interested in the amount of iron entering the Southern Ocean from meltwater streams in ice-free parts of the continent. I want to show that Measuring the chemistry of iron in a stream is related to climate change. And the Southern Ocean has a very low concentration of iron. And what's there is being used and taken up by phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are small microorganisms in the ocean that are plants and they photosynthesize and they draw CO2 down out of the atmosphere. So hypothetically, if you were to add a lot of iron to the Southern Ocean, you would get a uh, phytoplankton bloom. And that phytoplankton bloom would then grow and grow and since they're plants, they, they would take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So if we could increase the amount of phytoplankton in the Southern Ocean, that could potentially increase CO2 drawdown, which would effectively decrease the effects of climate change. So in order to understand how much iron is actually entering the ocean, you need to not only know the concentration of iron or the amount of iron in the water, you need to know how much water is traveling through the stream and entering the ocean. And we think that maybe with climate change, as we get more glacial melt, stream flow will also increase. It's just another piece of the puzzle in trying to understand how much carbon's in the atmosphere, how much carbon's gonna be removed from the atmosphere, and this is just another process that can potentially remove carbon from the atmosphere in the future. So here we are in the middle of Antarctica, in the dry valleys, like the super dusty place, super windy place, we're trying to measure iron, very low levels of iron that can easily be contaminated by that dust in this environment without getting them contaminated. So the tool that I want to talk about that helps us do some of this work is actually just a caulking gun. And it's not really a special caulking gun. I bought it on Amazon. The only special thing about it is that it's mostly plastic. If you can see this, the yellow part is plastic. And again, we want to keep anything metal away from our samples, because anything metal is going to have some amount of iron in it that could potentially contaminate it. This standard syringe that we use to collect samples with, we'll actually just stick the syringe into the water, pull the plunger up, and that draws water up into the syringe. We'll push the water through a series of filters that will collect different size fractions of iron. So we have a couple different filter sizes. 0.45 is one, 0.2 micron is another. The problem is that 0.45 microns is really tiny, and it, would, it takes about 10 minutes to push that through. So one workaround that we've come up with is that you can actually fit a standard syringe into a standard caulking gun, and it saves your hands because we're collecting hundreds of these samples, right? So we can just, I don't have a sample bottle with me, but I essentially hold a sample bottle here, and then I can just go like this, it pushes the the plunger down and it can really easily make that time go a lot faster and you don't have big bruises on your hands. I think my favorite part of working in Antarctica is just the excitement of it, right? You, know, you take this plane ride and then you get out and you're the, open the doors and like that cold, brisk air hits your face and it's super dry and it's super bright and it's just like a big shock to the system and we're you know, alone in the, this desolate, beautiful place. For me, working down in Antarctica is the pinnacle of my whole job of everything that I get to do.